So when you're planning, chapter one, dietetics textbook. So definitions, nutrition is a science of food. Nutrients are the substances, okay? Like carbohydrates, fats, uh, protein, uh, vitamins, minerals, macro minerals, micro minerals, okay, vitamin like substances, okay, all these things, antioxidants, whatever we, we have discussed uh, in some chapters, they all are called nutrients. But nutrition, nutrition is the science of food, okay, how the nutrients and other, sub, uh, other substances, how they act, how they interact with each other or with, within your body, how they create a balance in relationship with respect to health and disease, the process by which the organism will ingest, digest, absorb, transport, and utilize other nutrients and dispose of their product and products. Okay, all these understanding, all these, uh, all these uh, ph physiological processes, all these process. Okay, all these pathways. Okay, this is what we call as nutrition. It's a science of understanding and learning all these interactions. Okay, nutrients are different. Nutrition is different. Okay, health. We all are very familiar with this famous definition of health given by World Health Organization. Health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of any disease or infirmity. Okay, you have to be physically, mentally and socially in a good state. Okay, and just because you don't have a disease or just because you have any infirmities like any specially abled child, especially okay? abled children can also be healthy. Okay. So just because you have an infirmity uh, uh, or, uh, or disease condition doesn't mean that you become unhealthy. Okay, even if you get a disease condition, a healthy person will know how to come out of that. Okay, just you only if uh, if the, the just because you are free from diseases doesn't mean you are healthy. Okay, just because you do not have any infection doesn't mean that you are healthy. You may have some mental health issues or social uh, health issues. Okay, that could also tag you as an unhealthy individual. Okay. Coming to the determinants of food choices, there are some other definitions also given that we can read later. Dietary references, RDA, we, we, we will check, check that in other chapters. There is an entire chapter called RDA, Recommended Dietary Allowances. Okay, So in that, we will discuss about all these definitions in detail. So some definitions, some terminologies are given. You can read, read those terminologies on your own on page number two and three. Coming to the determinants of food choice, which means how from at a family level as well, at your own home, at your own, in your own family, if what are the factors that led to your food choices? You eat a certain kind of food, okay? You have certain kind of food practices at your home or at your own house. Okay, what what led to these food practices or choices? Okay. First is biological determinants, that is hunger and satiety. Hunger and satiety, hunger is different, satiety is different. Okay, hunger is more physiological. You feel hungry, okay, when your blood glucose level falls down, your body requires more energy, your body requires more glucose, you feel more hungry. Okay, satiety is more, uh, it's, it's a signal that, okay, you are no longer hungry, you have to stop eating food. Okay, hunger will tell you when to start eating food. Satiety will tell you when to stop eating food. Okay, so the central nervous system is involved here in controlling both hunger and satiety. Okay, there because uh, the leptin hormone as well as the ghrelin hormone both are released. Okay, to control hunger and satiety levels. Palatability is another determinant. Okay, uh, only if the food is tasty. Okay, you feel like eating it more. When the palatability increases, the food intake will also increases. The more the tastier the food is, okay, the more you will eat that food. Increase in the variety will also increase the palatability of any food. 
No, for examination, you don't have to learn any definitions by heart. Just understand the definition, that's it. Economical and physical determinants, cost and accessibility. Uh, for example, if, if you want seafood, okay, if you want seafood, prawns, seafood, okay, not the uh, freshwater fish, seafood, if you want that in the states like Jammu Kashmir or Arunachal Pradesh, is it easy for you or will it be cheap or is it is it be very easily accessible to have seafood in these distant states who are very far away, who are in the mainland India, very far away from the coastal regions? Okay, so that is cost and accessibility. Okay, even if uh, even if something that is grown that is local to these states, if you want it in your own home state, cost will affect your food choices. Okay, if the food is not accessible, you cannot have it. Okay, if the if the food is way out of your budget, you cannot have it. Am I audible to all? Yeah. So what it means is that lower income households, okay, people who specifically families who are under below poverty line they usually have a tendency to consume very few food groups that is available in the ration shops, okay? Very few food groups that are naturally cheaper and less costlier as compared to other food groups. And also they tend to have a lot of micronutrient deficiencies as well because they do not have the accessibility of good food, okay? So that is how cost and accessibility affects your food choices. Education and knowledge, Level of education can also influence your dietary behavior during adulthood. The more nutritional knowledge is available for the public. Okay, if, if the public is aware and they are knowledgeable, at least the basic concepts of nutrition, if they are knowledgeable of, it becomes easier for them to choose the right type of food for their own self and for their family. Okay. Then some social determinants like cultural influences so habit differences in habit or conception of certain food uh, for example rice is more prevalent in southern parts of india wheat is more prevalent in northern parts of india jowar is prevalent culturally it is more used in maharashtra bajra is used more in rajasthan ragi and other millets are used in andhra pradesh and karnataka so this is cultural influence okay the reason why you why your household eats more uh, eat more jowar why jowar based food is made in your home maybe culturally you are from the state of maharashtra so that is cultural influences using coconut uh, in the food okay some some uh, states of india they use a lot of coconut in their food southern states the northern in, in the northern part of india it's very rare, okay? Very rare to use coconut in their regular food, okay? So this is all cultural influences. Then social context. For example, uh, social media trends, peer pressure, okay? They also influence your food intake. At least once in a week or once in a month, you will have to have pizza or burger with your friends, okay? So this all comes under the social context. Of having having some meeting in office and having food outside with your colleagues okay so this all comes under social context and when you do it more frequently naturally whatever food you are picking at uh, at these social gatherings they become a part of your lifestyle as well okay for example drinking habit if somebody who was not much keen into drinking but they are attending a lot of office parties they're going out socializing with a lot of colleagues in bars or pubs slowly they will also develop the taste to a taste of alcohol different types of alcohol and then it becomes a lifestyle for them as well so that is social context values like religious beliefs political views okay for in, in india uh, the there is always a debate of using red beets like beef okay some states support that some states will not support it okay so uh, so these are the 
values of the people, how the political views, religious, religious views of having certain kind of meat or not having certain kind of meat. Social setting, uh, the majority of the food is eaten at home for everyone. And people also eat out in homes, schools, canteens, colleges, restaurants, workplaces, etc. So the availability of healthy food at home and away from the home increases the consumption of any food that is canteen based. Okay, because uh, very similar food like dal, chawal, rice, okay, thali. Uh, usually uh, the home food is very similar to a thali and wherever if in, in, in a restaurant you go or in, in canteen you go they, they have this thali system automatically the, they will make a lot of money out of thalis as well okay because so it is something very common okay it is uh, thali is something very co uh, common to everyone every customer who is coming and eating food there so that is the social setting then meal patterns People follow different meal pattern okay, according to their religious beliefs also. For example, Jains, Jains don't, don't eat anything after sunset. Okay, So the, their meal pattern is that they will not have a late dinner. Okay, they will have early dinner before sunset they will eat. After sunset they will not eat. So that's a religious setting, a, a religious belief, that value that has been passed. So meal pattern is also different. In every household, in some household, four meals a day three meals a day or some households to just two meals a day. Okay, meal pattern also changes. So these are the foundational determinants of your food choices. Then psychological factors, stress, mood. When you are stressful, you either overeat or you don't eat at all. It is very subjective. Some people, they eat a lot when they're stressed. Some people, they, don't, they will lose their appetite when they're stressed. Mood also influences your choice of food. If you are depressed, uh, in a depressed kind of mood, you will have a lot of cravings for sweets. And if you are also in a very good mood, in a very ch chirpy mood, you will eat more snacks, fried items. Processed food. an image this is uh the set this is something the social media has set okay the image of uh, having some specific kind of body among young people young girls and young boys they get influenced by what we see online on social media in televisions okay and they try to follow these body trends and sometimes what it happens is this will lead to uh high beauty standards, unachievable beauty standards, and it will lead to some eating disorders like anorexia, bulimia. Okay. So teenagers are the ones who are most commonly affected by the image, which is the determinant of food choice. So what happens here is because of the image related factors, they will not eat carbohydrates at all. They will not eat anything fried or anything that has fat. Then eating disorders, food choice is affected by an individual who suffers from eating disorder like anorexia, bulimia. Sometimes it, this, this eating disorder, why it developed? It could be a combination of biological, psychological, family, socio-cultural influences as well. consumer attitudes, beliefs, knowledge, and optimic, uh, optimistic bias. Consumer attitudes, for example, uh, what kind of, uh, what amount of fat or what types of fat you used to use in your food 50 years back, now it has completely changed. Okay. For example, 50 years back, was it refined oil or uh, wood pressed oil or virgin or oils which was which was used in the family any idea 50 years back
it was wood pressed oil okay refined oils came much later in the 90s late 90s and all okay in the late 90s and all or late 80s early 90s late 80s was the time when refined oil became a very common household uh, oil okay before that it was wood pressed oil fairly virgin oils that was used Cold pressed oil was also not a concept anywhere. Cold pressed oil are, are being used recently. Okay. So people's attitudes towards certain kind of food changes. Okay. Dalta. Uh, dalta Vanaspati was used uh, widely okay, in India. But now the consumption has reduced because it, it is a saturated fat and it affects uh, your cardiac health and all it's known it is pretty well known right now so the consumption has reduced okay so consumer attitude and beliefs change over the period of time and according to that your food choices will also change then optimistic uh, optimist, optimist, optimistic bias means people think that everyone has this um, so idea that what they are eating at home is already healthy and they don't have to change their diet in any way. So they will not uh, do any fundamental changes in their diet and they will continue with the same. Okay, so that is optimistic bias. Because again, having a dietary change is not easy because whatever you're introducing for the first time in your diet, to make it into a habit, it is not easy. Coming to functional food, first is antioxidant function effect. In which uh, a lot of food, a lot of food have this antioxidant effect. Here, antioxidant means they are ready to give up their electrons so that they can stabilize the free radicals. Free radicals are the atoms which has a hyperactive electron in their outer shell. And this hyperactive electron is capable of causing cellular level damage anywhere in the body. Okay, so to calm down this free radical, antioxidants present in the food, they will they're self sacrificial. Okay, they will sacrifice their own electrons so that they can calm down the free radicals and the free radicals will no longer attack the healthy cells and tissues in the body. So that is the main use of antioxidants. So a lot of food, every food group has some or the other form of antioxidants. Okay. So free radical damage in detail we will not study here because there is a separate chapter called antioxidants. So in that chapter, we will discuss this in detail regarding how free radicals affect the healthy tissues, how antioxidants function actually within your body, different types of antioxidants, major sources of antioxidants. There's an entire chapter for that. So in that, we will discuss that in detail. For example, in cereals um, like ragi, semolina, okay, they have more antioxidants as compared to rice or other cereals okay selenium element also which acts as an antioxidant oats have antioxidant property as compared to wheat or rice if you take so pulses soya protein anything that is made of soya has high antioxidant level rajma black gram dal moong dal green gram okay they all have phenolic uh, content. Phenol, phenolic phenol is also an antioxidant. Bengal gram, red gram, okay, they all are rich sources of selenium. Selenium is a mineral that acts as an antioxidant. Vegetables and fruits, we all know beta carotene, vitamin C, tocopherols are found abundantly in vegetables and fruits, raw vegetables and fruits, great source of antioxidants. Dry fruits, oils and seeds, uh, like walnut. Walnut is a, a, a nut, dry fruit, which has high amount of antioxidant. Also, the uh, 
grapes, red grapes. Spices like saffron is rich in antioxidant. Turmeric, which has curcumin, very strong antioxidant. Ginger, poppy seeds, clove. Okay, clove has the highest antioxidant property. Tea, coffee, they have flavonoids and polyphenols, both tea and coffee. Okay, uh, they, they both contain antioxidants. But if you add milk into tea or coffee, you will lose this. Okay, if you have black coffee without sugar, the antioxidant uh, activity is increased in that intake. If you have black tea or green tea, okay, you will have higher amount of antioxidants. But if you milk, uh, if you are, as soon as you mix milk into tea and coffee, you lose the benefit of antioxidants. These antioxidants from the beverages. Seeds and oils like flax seeds, mustard seeds, canola seeds, wrapped seeds. Okay, they all are great sources of antioxidants. Rice bran oil as well, sesame oil blends. whey roti, red wine, jaggery, okay, they all are great source of antioxidants. So in detail, we will discuss in the separate chapter. The detoxifying eff effect, tomato zava tea detoxifying effect because of the antioxidant found in its peel. Other food that has detoxifying chemicals are like cabbage, tomatoes, strawberries, pineapples, green peppers. black tea, green tea. But if you, but more than depending on detoxifying food elements, if you can take care of the health of your liver and kidneys, okay, and if you're getting a proper sound seven to eight hours of sleep, your body itself is capable of detoxifying any harmful toxins out of your body. Blocking and suppressing effect, this is specifically uh, important for blocking cancer causing mutations. So certain flavonoids present in tea, beverages, vitamin C, isoflavanols, okay, they all have the effect of preventing tumor growth. Okay, so in a way they can they can reduce the risk of cancer. Beans and legumes, okay, they are also rich in this suppressing properties and people who consume soya food regularly okay they there is seen that they rarely experience breast cancer uterus cancer or in men prostate cancer is very low among people who regularly consume soya based products An anti inflammatory effect. Push up all the fishes which are rich in omega 3 fatty acids. Omega 3 fatty acids has anti inflammatory effect. Cinnamon is a spice that has anti inflammatory effect. Ginger also. Okay, these are the food that has anti inflammatory effect. But majorly, it is omega-3 fatty acids, any source of omega-3 fatty acid, flax seeds or fish liver oils. Then we have hypocholesteremic effect, which means how these are the foods that can reduce your cholesterol or even reduce the risk of developing cholesterol if you have the family history of cholesterol. So soya protein, and uh, even fenugreek seeds, garlic, okay, raw garlic, yogurt, milk, they can reduce your cholesterol synthesis, high fiber in your diet, presence of soluble dietary fiber, like isabgul and this uh, psyllium husk. They all have hypocholesteremic effect. They can reduce the cholesterol levels. Hypoglycemic effect, fenugreek seeds is known to reduce your blood glucose levels. Fiber in your food, soluble fiber, insoluble fiber both. 
pinto beans, whole grams, legumes, they all can reduce your glycemic level in your blood. Antibacterial effect, probiotics, prebiotics, any food that has probiotics and prebiotics. Because these are good bacteria which can also control your uh, control the reproduction of bad bacteria within your body. If you have sufficient amount of good bacteria, they can suppress the growth of other bacteria within your body. Cinnamon is uh, another okay, cinnamon, garlic, turmeric. Okay, they are the spices. They have antibacterial effect. Digestive tract. Using hing, that's a fitted up when you are suffering from platelets issue. Carom seeds, ginger, fennel seeds. Carom seeds is uh, what we call as ajwine. Okay, carom seeds is the English name of it. It's called ajwine. Chilies as well, green chilies. Cloves oil, clove oil as well. They have digestive effect. Then immunopotentiating effect, which, which these are the foods that can improve your immunity or immune response. All the probiotics like curd, yogurt, fermented food, garlic, beetroot juice, beetroot in general, raw beetroot. Then the, uh, these are the uh, sources of antioxidants. You can take a screenshot of it. Different types of antioxidants, different names of antioxidants are given on the left. The best sources are given, major sources of their specific antioxidants are given on the right. Cinnamon tea, you can have cinnamon, boiled cinnamon stick in water. You can have that with green tea. You can you can have you can mix cinnamon stick while you're boiling your green tea or while you're seeping your green tea. Even cloud, you can do the same thing. Dry spices, when you make a tea out of it, okay, it's a good way to consume it. Rather than having it as it is, it, it can be uh, like it, it, it will give you a very strong flavor profile, which may be uncomfortable. This is a different type of food and their antioxidants. Cereals have perulic, caffeinic, phytic, selenium, protein, lysine. Pulses has diadesine, genetic. Genistein. You don't have to remember these names. Vegetables and fruits are vitamin C, beta carotene, tocopherols. So in the textbook, when you read, all these names will come up. Okay, these are the different names of the antioxidants and the food group which is rich in that. Dry fruits, nuts, seeds, spices, carotenoids, curcumin, eugenol, tea, coffee, flavonoids, chlorogenic acid, polyphenols. Whey proteins, red wine has proanthocyanidins, jaggery has phenols. So coming to the food group system, you have the five food group system as well as the four food group system. Okay, in the five food group system, you have cereals, grains, and product, pulses as a second group, okay, milk, egg, and flesh food, all the protein-based sources, major protein-based sources are Another group, fruits and vegetables, they both comp comprise in a single group. Fats and sugar in another group, okay? So this is the first, uh, the five food group system. There are two different food groups discussed. ICMR usually suggests the four food group system. We'll see the pro four food group later. So cereals and green products like your rice, wheat, ragi, vajra, maize, jowa, barley, rice flakes, wheat flour, 
okay pulses comes under your all the grams okay black gram moong dal urad dal uh, bengal gram cow peas rajma regular peas soybean beans they come under the pulses and legumes visible as uh, visible fats come under the fat and sugar category saturated and unsaturated fatty acids both will come under the fat and sugar category this is the four food group plan which icmr has recommended indian council of medical research so even the balanced diet that indian government has planned for the population this four food group food group system works better so major part of your diet in any if you take any of the indian diet major part of the indian diet comes from cereals legumes beans and dairy food okay so major or majority of your plate is usually your cereals and legumes the next is vegetables and fruits okay three to four portion sizes of vegetables and fruits is average at least five to six you should have animal source and oils and highly processed food, high in sugar and fat. Here, uh, the only difference between the five food group and the four food group is that in five food group, cereals have a different group, pulses have a different group. In four food groups, they have combined the cereals and pulses in one whole category. That is the only major difference in these two food groups. So what is the use of these food groups? It's uh, it's a tool for assessing your nutrition and doing your screening. Are you malnourished, undernourished, overnourished? Okay, to do your nutritional counseling to help you understand how you should portion size, how to how to control your portions, which all food groups should should be included in your diet on a regular basis. Explaining therapeutic diet to the patients. Okay, food labeling and surveillance system. This is used in this last point is used in industrial level of food labeling and surveillance. So these are the uses of food group. So coming to the general guidelines that ICMR has suggested while using this food group. When it comes to pulses and cereals, consume adequately, okay? What, how much is necessary based on your calorie intake only? According to that, you have to consume the pulses and cereals. When it comes to fruits and vegetables, eat liberally as much as possible, okay? Beet, dairy products and fats, eat moderately only what is required and try to Keep this in moderation. And the sweets, processed sweets, sugar, okay, saturated fatty acid food, eat sparingly here and there, once in a while. Okay. So this is the general guidelines. Exercise and uh, be, be physically active, exercise regularly. As, as much as possible, abstain from alcohol and tobacco. Okay, so these are the general guidelines that ICMR has given. Uh, on page number 16 and 17, you will find all the guidelines in detail. You can just go through it. It's a self, uh, you can do a self-study on this. Just read through the points. Then there is my pyramid. It is used in USA. Okay. So in my pyramid, you can see how they have categorized different food groups grains all the uh, cereals and pulses are also under the grains category in my pyramid uh, almost uh, slightly higher in number as compared to the vegetables but vegetables and fruits are separate category when it comes to my pyramid oils very little milk abundantly meat and beans moderate Physical activity should be present. So this is my pyramid. So in your textbook, uh, my pyramid diet they have not mentioned in a in the previous batch textbook they had mentioned. So in this new edition, you do not have my pyramid. My plate again it comes from USA. 
the, the, the former uh, first lady in USA, Michelle Obama, she had introduced along with the assistance of the school program system in USA, they had introduced this my plate system to make the students understand the importance of nutrition. Okay, they started this with at the school level. Uh, so here again, you can see half of the plate contains of a liberal quantity of fruits and vegetables. One fourth of it is grains and the other part is protein. Okay, then you have dairy. Dairy is a separate uh, it's it's out of the plate. It's separately you have to consume dairy products. So this in this program was initiated at the school development level, and then it uh, transfer transfers into the societal level as well. But they were successful of changing the public schools food menu into uh, which can adapt into my plate system. Then you have the Mediterranean diet pyramid. So on paper, Mediterranean diet looks very healthy, which can be followed by everyone, easy to understand. But when you compare it with the Indian food habits, it is very difficult to follow a Mediterranean diet pyramid. Okay, Because if you look at a Mediterranean diet, Majority of their food is in salad form, raw fruits and vegetables. Okay, this is something that Indian food habit will not allow you to follow this for for in a long term. Okay. So what is Mediterranean diet? Okay, they use whatever grains they use here, it's whole, okay, whole grains, multi-grains and whole grains are used. They use only plant oils majorly in cooking, okay, and olive oil, canola oil, soy oil, okay. A use of butter is quite less. Vegetables, they will take in abundance, raw vegetables specifically, fruits also two to three times a day, they eat fruit. Separate category for nuts, legumes two to three times a day, different forms of nuts. Um, um, protein sources are from fish, poultry, eggs, Two to three, uh, two times a day at least. Okay, dairy products for calcium supplement, mm -hmm. and uh, they have less amount, but sp sparingly they will use butter. They use butter, but very rare. They they don't use butter as a major source of their uh, oils or fats. White rice, white bread, white pasta is used very rarely in Mediterranean diet. Okay, and. Red wine, uh, alcohol in the form of red wine is very common. And they also take multiple vitamin supplements to maintain their health and exercises and weight control is also under their checklist. Okay, so this is the foundation, basic foundation of a Mediterranean diet. Very difficult to follow in Indian scenario because even Indians use a lot of vegetables and fruits, but it is cooked version. Okay, but when it comes to a Mediterranean diet, it is majorly green salads, lot of greens, raw vegetables or sauteed, slightly sauteed vegetables, tempered vegetables. So this is this, this does not fit well with the Indian food habits. So coming to the planning of balanced diet, how do you plan the balanced diet? So for, first understand what is balanced diet. It contains different types of food in different quantities and proportions. So that the calories, proteins, minerals, vitamin requirement, all the micronutrient requirement, everything is met adequately. Food exchange list. You have to understand what is food about balance diet. Some points are given. You can read it. The importance, the features of balance diet. But everyone knows it already from the name itself. It's understood what's a balance diet. Is everything is in a perfect balance? All the micronutrients make up, macronutrients are met 
through a balanced diet. Even the fiber requirements, roughage and fiber requirements are met. Food exchange list. So food exchange list, in your textbook, they have given a protein-based food exchange list, which means every day if you have the same kind of Okay, same meal or same recipe on a daily basis to meet a specific protein category, protein requirement, you will be born. Okay, so food exchange list, what they do, they allow you to exchange or swap recipes in such a way that your protein, what protein requirement, carbohydrate, uh, your fat, okay, these things don't change. The, the, uh, the calories from these don't change at all, but the recipe changes. So there is variety in your diet. Okay, that is the use of food exchange list. Okay, for example, if today you are having two idlis, okay, in breakfast, to every week if you have a, if you have just two idlis for breakfast, it becomes monotonous. You will be bored. Okay, even though those it those food is meeting your nutritional benefit, you you are you are getting your nutritional benefit. You are meeting your protein requirement or carbohydrate requirement, whatever through that. Okay, but every day having the same thing, it becomes very monotonous. So to bring that change, but not changing the underlying values of nutrients, just changing the name and the recipe, but not changing the underlying values of the nutrients, that is how food exchange list will help you out. Is it clear to all what is food exchange list? Then we have food composition tables. So in food composition tables, they have the nutrient value of major Indian food. So it was given by National Institute of Nutrition, these composition tables. You can search it on online, okay? So uh, regionally, whatever uh, famous recipes are there or famous food, qualities are there based on the region, different regions of India. Okay, the National, National Institute of Nutrition has made a food composition list which will help you identify if this, if you are going for a Gujarati Thali, for example, how much uh, protein, carbohydrates, fats you will get. Okay, if the Thali has these many items, these are the specific items that the Thali has in this many count, okay, portion sizes, count, chapati count, etc. How much calories you are getting? So that is the food composition list. Not just calories, the uh, how, what is the amount of vitamins, minerals, approximate amount of vitamins, minerals, proteins you get. Okay, that is the use of food composition tables. Then coming to the principles of planning diet. Principles of diet planning. When as a dietitian or as a nutritionist, when you are making a menu plan or a diet plan for someone, these are the points you have should you should be very clear on. Okay. It should be based on the disease condition of the patient. Who, whomever you are, they are not your patient, they are your clients, but who whatever disease condition, if they are a person who suffers from high blood pressure or they are diabetic, okay. So whatever disease condition they are suffering from, based on that. Uh, giving respect to those requirements, you have to formulate the diet plan. It should meet the nutritional requirement as well. It should fulfill the family needs as well. When you are making a diet plan for the entire family, everyone's nutritional need has to be fulfilled. Planning should save time and energy. Don't give them big recipes, huge recipes, or very recipes that requires a lot of food processing. Don't give them that. Give them simple recipe, which can save a lot of time and energy. Economic concentration has to be done. You have to know the budget of the of the family you are entering to. Are they from middle class family, upper middle class? Will they be able to buy these kind of specific vegetables on a regular basis? Or okay. 
Many planting should give maximum nutrients. Consideration of individuals like and dislike. Okay, ask them what are the what are their favorite dishes, what are their favorite recipes, and uh, find a way around those recipes to put that into into the menu plan as well. It should provide variety. It should not be monotonous. Food habits are also checked. Seasonal availability, psychological aspect. Okay, these all things have to be kept in mind while making a menu plan. So always, always make sure you go season, uh, by seasonal availability, staple food, seasonal availability, food habits, likes and dislikes. Okay, you, if you go by this, you will usually fulfill all the requirements. So steps involved in planning diet. First step is understanding what is your recommended dietary allowance. Okay, so for that, those who have the textbook, table 1.7 and table 1.8, RDA, RDA is given in 1.7, 1.8 has estimated average requirement, but that is not important for you. RDA is important. Okay, so, uh, so this is the most recent table given by ICMR 2020 published. Okay, so you can refer this uh, uh, this table to understand what is the RDA for different age groups. And also if they are in a specific lifestyle, like sedentary, moderate, heavy working lifestyle, uh, uh, physiologically, if the woman is non-pregnant, pregnant, or lactating, what are their RDA is given in this. Uh, that is the first step. First, you have to identify when you see a client, you ask them their age, okay? Uh, you see their gender, you ask them their age, and then uh, come to the uh, come to this table and identify what is the recommended daily allowances or go to the chapter in dietetics which has their age and see the guidelines, which all specific nutrients you have to focus a lot on. So for example, if you're dealing with teenagers, okay, you have to focus a lot in protein intake, calcium intake, iron intake. If you're dealing with a girl, adolescent girl, iron, protein, calcium intake, okay, has to be checked. Control the fat intake. Fat intake should be around 25 grams only. If only if the child is very active, or uh, the adolescent girl is very active, she can go up to 30 gram. But apart from that, stay below 25 gram of fat on a daily basis. Okay, so these, uh, uh, you will know these insights only when you read the chapters of nutritional requirements on, on different age groups, which we will take later. Okay, so RTA come for the first step is understanding what is their recommended daily allowances. Okay. Consider them healthy, free of any formatives, and what their RDA are. Have an understanding of that. Second step is to prepare the food list. So you can use ICMR tables as well. So the tables on page number 23 and 24. Uh, how to use these tables, I'll explain you. So, um, Let's say you are taking uh, a food group of milk and milk products. Okay, table 1.9. We are discussing table 1.9. So you are creating a food list for your client. Okay, so you you have milk and milk products. 100, 100 gram of milk and milk products you are, you, you are, you are going to put in the breakfast. Okay, it could be yogurt. Yogurt is a milk product. It could be milk as it is, tea or coffee, okay, curd, buttermilk, whatever, any any milk product, okay. A hundred gram you're gonna put for breakfast. Yeah, yeah. How much energy will this hundred gram of milk or milk products give? From the table, can you put it in the chat box? Yes. What is the average average fat content in milk products? Okay. So now let's say egg. 
okay you are planning to give two eggs for a pregnant woman or you are you are making a menu plan for a pregnant woman you are planning to give two eggs in breakfast two boiled eggs are eggs okay so how much protein will this woman get from two boiled eggs yes 14 gram approximately 14 gram okay so now you know how you will use this table to make a diet plan an approximate way of using different food groups okay classifying it into breakfast lunch and dinner how much calories you will get what will be the carbohydrate protein if you want to use uh, internet google sources to find it out you can use that as well but you have a source in your textbook as well to refer to okay now is it clear how to use this table when you make menu plan out of this this chapter it becomes it will become very easy for you understand if you use these tables okay so even without the help of internet you can still make a menu plan out of these tables given in this chapter okay next very important part mm, come to table 1.11 on page number 24 table 1.11 So here, let's say I'm giving you a task of a woman who is moderately active, okay, a woman who is moderately active, how much grams of pulses she should have for the entire day? How much gram? This is uncooked, okay? This is not cooked. How much gram of pulses she should have for the entire day? Check the tables again. Try to understand the table. Thirty gram. See. The portion in grams that they have given is the basic requirement. At least you should have this. Yes, it is right. It is 75 grams. You have to multiply the number. Okay. You see the, col the, co the column of moderate uh, type of work, moderate woman. It is 2.5. Multiply the 2.5 with the pulses portion that is 30. 2.5 into 30. So you get 75 grams. So 75 gram is the is the portion size of pulses this woman should have throughout the day. This is uncooked, okay? 75 gram of not cooked food. This is uncooked. When you take uh, when you take it out of your storage, 75 gram should uh, should all, uh, make sure 75 gram is for the lady in the house who is moderately active, okay? Like that, you can add for all the members in the house as well. For the kids, for, for infants, toddlers, preschoolers, teenagers, you have table 1.10. For adults, you have table 1.11. The same you have to apply. For example, let's I, I'll give you one more task. Let's say... Uh, a teenage girl, she is 16 year old, okay, 16 year old teenage girl, how much gram of green leafy vegetable should you give this girl? 16 year old teenage girl, how much gram of green leafy vegetables should you give her on a daily basis? Yes, 100 grams. Because under uh, in the teenage category, a 16-year-old teenage category, 
okay when you come to the green leafy category it's one and at the basic requirement is 100 100 grams should be given to any teenage girl okay but you have to multiply the number that is that comes right under that age category you will get exactly how much you have to give for to them for on a daily basis so is it clear to all how to use these two tables These are the ICMR tables, okay? When you make menu plan, you will, you will know the importance of these tables, okay? So here you don't have to, when you directly come to the ICMR tables, you don't have to worry about the RDA. Keeping in the RDA, keeping the RDA in mind, they have created this table. So you don't have to buy hard the RDA. But when you regularly use these tables, when you use this for flight, automatically you will remember exactly how much gram you have to use. Okay. So RDA, you will not have to, don't mug up RDA, RDA values. Use these tables instead. These tables are set in such a way that they automatically meet the RDA requirements of the given age group and, uh, and the sex of the person. Is it clear to all? Then we go use the cooked food exchange list. See, these tables are uncooked food. The portion portion sizes, what they have given, the gram that you, you that you come up with after multiplying. Okay, it is uncooked, uncooked. Okay, specifically when I'm, I'm talking about pulses, cereals, fruits, vegetables. Okay, uncooked. But when you are using exchange list. It is cooked food exchange list. Okay. So let's say um, a, a client a client requires 15 gram of protein. Okay, 15 gram of protein in breakfast. Okay. So how many katori of wheat rava will you give? You're, you're only giving uh, rava, no tea, no coffee, nothing. Okay, this person only has the option of having rava. So how many katoris of K means katori in the, in the table, K means katori. One katori, they take it as 150 ml. Okay, boiled wheat rava. How many katori of boiled wheat rava is required to fulfill at least 15 gram of protein? Fifteen gram of protein. It will be approximately five katoris. Okay, five katoris of uh, having beet rava is too much. So what you will do? You will give only one katori, but the remaining protein has to come from some other kind of food material, food like milk. Okay, or uh, milk with protein powder okay so like that but using the food exchange list you have an idea now exactly one katori of wheat rava approximately how much protein you will get from this nowadays people are more concern, concerned about their protein intake okay so it's it's a good thing that you have the protein exchange list in your textbook so let's say uh, On day one, day one, if you are making a big dosha, big dosha, okay, how, how much protein you will get? You will get approximately 1.5 to 3.5 gram of protein from one big dosha. Sorry, approximately 5, five gram of protein from one big dosha because uh, half a uh, half size of a, a big dosa can give you maximum 3.5 gram of protein. So if you have full one big uh, dosa, it will give you a, 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 around 5 to 6 gram of protein. Okay. So using this food exchange list, you will understand how much protein you will get, how much grams of protein you will get using cereal exchange. This is this was just cereal exchange. Okay. 
in pulse exchange you have sambar rasam okay how much katori of sambar how much katori of rasam will give you the give you the same protein okay so you can change your recipes on a daily basis but you can be sure that you will get the same amount of protein on a daily basis okay is it clear how to use the food exchange list it is pre calculated you just have to add if you see serial exchange all the all the examples that that they have given serial exchange can give you 1.5 to 3.5 gram of protein it is written on top so consider the serial in that range category but you will not only have cereals in breakfast right you will have some pulses as well even if you take lunch okay you will have cereals you will have pulses Katori means 150 ml. On the top of the table, they have given. Katori means K. K means Katori. It means 150 ml. In, in this particular table, they have considered Katori as 150 ml. Meat exchange, milk exchange, vegetable exchange, fruit exchange. Is it clear how to use the food exchange list? And finally, you make the menu. You see the RDA, now you know the RDA. Use the tables of ICMR, use the cooked food ex exchange list step by step. Finally, your menu are menu is made. Okay, the food that is listed in step two, convert them into recipes. Okay. Once you find what, what the ICMR tables tell you about the cereals and pulses, take the gram, you know the carbohydrate protein in this uncooked food, make them into recipes. Okay, using the food exchange list. Now your menu is ready, okay?